we are back in lockdown. Yep. <laughs> everybody i'm roxy this is chaotic bibliophile and today i bring you a book haul which is partly my birthday book haul the thing is that my birthday is actually in two weeks from filming this on the 16th and my dad and i had a plan to celebrate together that is no longer feasible because we are going back into lockdown i understand that in the current global situation this is not a big deal but it is for me this year is uh, coming with a lot of good changes but because of those changes it is very important for me that i spend a lot of time with my dad and that we celebrate these things i am the kind of person who loves her birthday so because of that we decided to move it forward it was completely impromptu. We decided to go out for lunch and go to a couple of bookstores, which is what we were going to do originally. It's not the most original plan, but it's our thing. Now, because I, I'm always buying a book or two while I'm out in the city, I actually have a lot of books that I haven't hold. Not one of those people who keeps all her books in a spot to hold them. I think that's a great system. I just don't. In any case, I put all of these holes together. I'm going to start with the non-birthday stuff. Oh, this is interesting. So there is a very cool imprint called Lumen. They publish books in Spanish from all around the world. They just do such a great job. They are actually the ones who publish Elena Ferrante. They are always looking for newly discovered classics and a lot of new fiction and non-fiction yeah i just really love them and also their books are like these big floppy but not overly so paperbacks with french flaps and really nice pages with a great spacing and not the biggest margins but enough to take notes i just really love them so i have three books here this one is original in spanish it's called batuta rebelde a biography i actually don't know what this is called in english so like the conductor baton right it's a baton no maybe it's not well the conductor's stick <laughs> That's not right. By Patricia Pulitzer. And this is basically a look into Jorge Peña Gen, who is a very important classical music conductor in the 50s in Chile. And he kickstarted a whole movement in La Serena, a northern town in Chile. He was really convinced that classical music would help it, communities of children, especially and teenagers who were poor or came from bad homes so he really wanted to make classical music accessible for them it sounds amazing i am not going to read this yet because i'm saving it for nonfiction november but i'm very excited okay so i have consent here by vanessa springora this is not the consent that was nominated for the women's prize and it's very interesting because it's a memoir it's translated from the french by the way by noemi sobre yes okay so it's translated from the french but in spanish it's sold as autofiction. It's sold as a biographical novel. And in English, it's sold as a memoir. And that is fascinating. I think it was published in France as a memoir. But because memoirs aren't really the thing here in Chile, and I think in, in general in the Spanish-speaking world, aside from, of course, celebrity memoirs, I think that's why they market it as autofiction. And in turn, autofiction is quite normal here. Maybe that's why they market it this way. I'm fascinated. Anyways, this is about Vanessa Springora, who had a relationship with a very important writer and professor in France. It was toxic, abusive relationship. He was older than her. I don't know if I, by how many years, but a lot. This really shook the intellectual establishment and I'm very curious. I got the recommendation from Natalie from Curious Reader, link down below to her channel of course. We've been discussing the nature of marketing basically in terms of memoir and autofiction. It's fascinating. And this, I wanted to talk to you about this. This is 
a collection of short stories by Marcel Proust. I am so excited. A lot of this have not been published, I don't know if in English, but at least in Spanish. Apparently Proust himself didn't publish them in life because some of these stories are gay. I I'm very much looking forward to this. I might start with this with Proust. I know it's not the traditional way in, but yeah. These five books I got on sale and I got them for one reason in particular, apart from me wanting them, of course, but it's because um, this publisher called Montacerdos, it's a Chilean publisher, just published Yasmina Barrera's latest book, Linea Negra, which is an essay of the same kind of on lighthouses, which was a book that I read last year and I really, really loved, on motherhood and being pregnant. Jury is still out on motherhood, but I don't have any interest in being pregnant ever. So I'm actually quite fascinated by the topic. I know it's technically very natural. It's like the most natural thing ever, of course, but to me, emotionally rather than intellectually, it seems like, why? Why would you ever make that choice? And so I'm fascinated and I want to read this because I really, really loved On Lighthouses. I don't know if it's in English as always. Anything that I mention will be credited down below. I always do that. And in some cases, if the very same edition is not in English, but there is some other edition that contains, for example, poetry or short stories of that author in English, I will also credit them down below. So please always check the description. I also have the meanings, I assume, of comedy by Willie Cipher. I think this is translated from the English. It's translated by Luis Weisman. I'm very excited, by the way, if you read in Spanish, this collection has some really, really good literary criticism. I also have some thoughts on translation by Marcelo Cohen in this edition and Marginalia by Edgar Allan Poe. So a collection of his Marginalia and annotated, of course, and a professor of mine. He was actually my undergrad thesis advisor and we worked on stylistics together. He published a book on free indirect style and I was one of the translation assistants. So I have such deep feelings for this collection in general. This is about comedy, of course, in literature and why it's so often overlooked in favor of drama. I love comedy in so many different ways and I think it has so much power that it is often overlooked in intellectual circles, but in real life you see that comedy and humor and irony are very present and are very powerful tools. So. I am very much looking forward to delving deeper into comedy studies, and this is a step towards that. Ah, oh, yes, I have Le Mebel by Soledad Bianchi, or Bianchi. This is also original in Spanish. You know I love Le Mebel, not need for me to repeat it. This is the first serious academic study done of Le Mebel. So Soledad Bianchi was a complete pioneer when people were still looking down on Le Mebel because he did chronicles mostly and, you know, short form journalism and used very quotidian language in very complicated and beautiful ways. But yes, it was an aesthetic of the everyday or even of the dirty and not inherently beautiful of the everyday, but he beautified it through his language. It was a while until the Chilean literary establishment acknowledged Le Mebel as the genius he is. Soledad Bianchi was one of the first, and this is a collection of essays about his work. So excited. Then I have Reinos or Kingdoms by Romina Reyes. These are short stories by a young Chilean author, sadly not translated into English, I don't think, but I'm very excited because these are set in Santiago, but they are very everyday and current. Although I love all the authors that I've mentioned, I have still yet to find an author that describes my experience in Santiago, you know what I mean? So I'm very much looking forward to this. Usted está aquí, or You Are Here, by Margarita Garcia Roballo. She's a Caribbean author, and I don't read a lot of Caribbean literature, and that is a very generous way of putting it. I think at most, I've read one or two books ever, and it's shameful. I need to change that. Part of me wants to go to the classics, but I also want to know what it's being produced now. If you have any recommendations, of course, leave them down below, because I do have so many books, I might take a while to get to them, but I always pay attention. So yeah, I'm very excited. These are short stories, I think, but it looks at 
specifically Hollywood production and sort of this tension between luxury tourism and the people who live in a place. It's giving me a small place by Jamaica Kincaid vibes and I love that book. So really looking forward to this. Then on a completely separate occasion, I got these two books. This is Canon by Camilo Marx. The subtitle is Ashes and Diamonds of Chilean Narrative. This is also in Spanish. I wish it were translated. It's supposed to be a book length essay. It's quite short talking about the Chilean canon, its evolution. As I've said, I never really studied Chilean literature. My literature education at school was pretty mediocre, let's say. I read some good books, but the contextualization of the books was non-existent and then instead of doing the Spanish version of my major I did the English version so basically I need to catch up <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying <laughs> then I have a book by Luis Noriega Razones para desconfiar de sus vecinos or reasons not to trust your neighbors this was a complete cover by I mean I thought the title was so interesting I think it's interconnected short stories all set in the same building so I am very excited, cannot wait. I always say that, although of course I have to wait because I have so many books, but it doesn't matter. I am not one of those people who feels pressured to read them all because I understand that reading the books and buying the books are two interrelated but separated hobbies and I enjoy both. Okay, those I bought like two or three months ago actually and these I bought last month. I bought them at a secondhand shop that I love and I love the owner. He's this old guy who's been managing the store for the last 30 years. He's the best and he has some really great stuff. The book that started it all is this. Travivario, Life and Work of the Famous Violin Maker by Juan Carlos Otani. So this is in Spanish originally. It's about Stradivarius, the violin maker. Remember that I read that book by Toby Faber. Um, oh, I forgot the name, but the Stradivarius book. I think it's called Stradivarius Genius. I don't know why I have never touched a violin in my life, but I am fascinated by all instruments, but especially all the string section in orchestra maybe because I love chamber music, whether it be with piano and without. So I'm very fascinated by the string section in general and I would like some time to learn a string instrument. And also there's such a legend in relation to Stradivarius. I didn't love Stradivarius Genius. I think this might scratch that itch. It's also a really old book, like really, really old. Look at it, look at it. Oh my god, I don't know if you like old books. For me, it depends. I don't always love them, but some of them, I think of them as treasures, so yeah. Okay, then I have The Nightless City or The History of Yoshiwara Yuwaku by J.E. De Becker. It's about a specific district, I think, in Tokyo, and it basically talks about the rise of the nightlife in Tokyo during a specific time. Look at this. It has, like, maps. It looks very dense. I don't anticipate I'm going to be getting to this anytime soon, but I am very interested in reading this. You know, I love Japan and I'm just interested in learning about it. I also like that a lot of the names are in Japanese and like the concepts are like written in kanji. You can't see it probably, but yeah, I like that. Then a treasure, Margaret Yorsoner's essay on Yukio Mishima called Mishima or the vision of the void no idea if that's the name but that's the name in, in spanish this is translated from the french by enrique sordo i haven't read margaret yours in our years but i know she's very important and i respect her as oh i just noticed that you can see the books that i've been leaving here i hope no one is triggered <laughs> yeah what can i say it's it's Margaret Yours and our own Mishima. I don't know if this is the case in English, but this is really hard to get in Spanish. So when I saw it, I was willing to pay a ridiculously high price, but because the owner is so great, he actually gave me a really, really good price. Yeah, so excited. I am going to read, I think, one more Mishima book before I read this, but yes, yes! Then I have an Arthur Miller play, The View from, oh, A View from the Bridge. I don't know what this is about, but I was blown away by Death of a Salesman and I am one of those people who loves reading plays. It's such a great exercise for the imagination. I am doing a diploma in literary translation 
and I am currently doing drama translation and it's hilarious because none of the professors like reading plays. They all hate it and think it's almost pointless because they love theater so much. I understand where they are coming from, but to me, I mean, it's maybe because I'm attracted to the ideas of directing and putting something together, but they've also directed. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but I love reading plays. So yeah, very excited. And then six novels by Colette in this beautiful vintage modern library edition. Also, I think this is a first printing of this editions. It's not like a first edition Colette, but it's a first edition modern library in Colette. And the translator for this, by the way, is Antonia White. It's beautiful, isn't it? So this has Claudine at school, Gigi, musical sidelights, Shelley, The Last of Shelley, and Mitsu. Or Mitsu. I haven't read any Colette, but I've always wanted to. It's just I've never been too sure where to start and I think now I'm going to just read through this in the order that they appear here because I have a feeling I'm going to love Colette, maybe I'm wrong, but I have high hopes so here's to Colette. I feel like I get more and more excited with every book that I pull. It's just these were finds. They, these are treasures so I'm really happy about all of them. The Great Modern Poets, the best poetry of our times, edited by Michael Schmidt. Our Times, this is not the most up-to-date collection, but it's so beautiful. Also, it's not the least up-to-date collection, more varied canon than what we're used to. And yes, it's, it's shallow, but I love it because it has a picture of the um, author, then a bio, and then a couple of poems. I hope you can see it. It's so lovely. I'm so excited. You know, I love poetry and of course I love modern poetry because I love modern literature. I, I'm so excited. <laughs> By the way, you'll see in my wrap ups that I've been reading some great poetry. So watch out for that. Okay, so two more books that I bought at a cute little bookstore that just opened two weeks ago in a neighborhood that I love that it's not exactly my neighborhood but it's a neighborhood that's very dear and near to my heart and it's very close to where I live and I bought this tiny little book called Una Escuela para la Vida or a School for Life by Nuccio Ordine and it's translated from Italian by Gemma Bayot and Jordi Bayot. This is an essay originally published in 1958 all about education and why we should view education in purely utilitarian terms. I completely understand the socioeconomic reasons why in these conditions one would view education as utilitarian, but in an ideal world and at any chance that we get, I think we should view education for its own sake. Almost like art, actually, those are two of the things that give me most pleasure in life. So I am very, very eager to read this. And because they just opened, they were giving away this beautiful illustrated book. I am not like the biggest illustrated book reader, but I do read them once in a while and this looks adorable. It's about children who play soccer. Soccer is a very democratic sport in the sense that you only need a ball and there are many substitutes that you can use and you can play it everywhere. So I think the story talks a bit about that. And this is by Eymar Toledo. Oh, sorry. I <laughs> In Spanish, it's called Vene Más Rápido Que La Gallina Más Rápida. My granddad, who doesn't live in Chile anymore, sent me a little birthday present and I was so excited. I actually walked into my dad's apartment and I saw the stuff on the table and I knew right away they were for me. And it was like, hey, was that a present that my granddad sent me? And it's funny because we haven't spent that much time together in my life in general, but I feel like he understands so well what I like. And I think this eagerness to learn that runs in my family comes from him. So he sent an Eric Satie pieces pour piano and the gymnopedies by Clara Nielsen. It's just so beautiful. And in case you're wondering, yes, I do listen to physical CDs every once in a while. He also sent two National Geographic magazines. One is on genius, why some people are so much smarter than the rest of us. And you know, the cover is inspired by Genius, the TV series, which I love. Then why we lie, the science behind our complicated relationship with the truth. Fascinating. 
fascinating. Okay, now birthday stuff. It's funny because that is the title of the video, but only now I'm getting to my birthday stuff. I hope you don't mind. Let's start with more CDs because I, really I do buy them and not super often. I try to buy them on sale and stuff, but it's not hard to find albums on sale. So at the bookstore that we went to, I found these and I just remember that I wanted to tell this story at the beginning, but because I got so excited with the books, I forgot. So I don't know if, if anyone watching has ever been to Santiago, but here we had a really big bookstore. It is now part of a chain, my favorite bookstore chain called Manantial, which is part of Antarctica. And I grew up going to this bookstore. I really, really love it. It's very beautiful in an old part of Santiago right in the center and today we found out that they are moving to a different location probably because the new location is smaller cheaper and it was sad because I hope they make it I hope the store survives of course I love indie bookstores and you know I support indie bookstores but that chain in particular is very important it's maybe because I'm emotional because of all the changes that are going on around me and being back under lockdown but it really hit me and it was also like really apparent because everything was like out of place and everything was on sale almost and I don't know it just it's kind of sad but at the same time I got some good deals so yeah anyways <laughs> Whenever I feel overwhelmed, and this is something, again, I've been doing since I was in high school and I was able to move through the city on my own, I just went on walks. That's what I did. Now, during this pandemonium, I've taken every opportunity I've had to just go out and walk because we are restricted in that as well. And every time there is transformation, you know, things that are not, but also new things. So it's not all bad, even in the midst of this chaos, there are new things springing out, like the bookstore that I mentioned earlier, right? So it's not like everything is terrible, but you still get nostalgic because of change and because things you loved or things you were just very familiar with are no longer there and you notice because you happen to go on a walk and it just makes me emotional. Again, I understand this is not a big deal in the grand scheme of things and I'll be fine and everyone will be fine, but it's just, it, it gives me feelings, okay? I, I do have feelings. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the CDs. So these are two CD booklets. The collection is called Genius of Piano, need I say more? William Papel plays Brahms, Chopin, Bach, and Rachmaninoff. Alicia de la Rocha, Ricardo Viñez, and Frank Marshall play Granados and Falla. Honestly, I only listen to like two pieces by Granados, but I'm willing to listen to more, and I love Manuel de Falla. So, Sviatoslav Richter plays Schubert or Schubert, Rachmaninoff, Prokofiev, Schumann. Alfredo Cortot plays Chopin, Frank, Mendelssohn. And in case you're wondering, yes, they are different Chopin things. We have the mazurkas, the ballads or ballads, and here we have the studies and preludes. I think in English you call them etudes, right? You use the French name, yes, the etudes. I had to get Glenn Gould on Bach, of course. Okay, I'm not 100% sold on Glenn Gould yet. I understand. I. How can you not be fascinated by Glenn Gould, basically? But then, my favorite. Not Claudia Rao levels of bayness. I can't believe I just said that, but it's it's up there. Plus, playing one of my faves, Arthur Rubinstein playing Chopin. Enough said. Now the books. I did buy books. So I got this book that I find fascinating. It's called El Arbol y la Enredadera by Dola de Jong. It's translated from Dutch and um, it's about two women that I don't know if they are lovers or friends or the book is purposefully doing that thing where it's ambiguous i have no idea because the back is not very specific but yeah it's supposed to be about their relationship and the tensions between them they are very different but they do have a relationship so they love each other i don't know again if it's platonic if it's sisterly if it's rivalry i don't know but it sounds fascinating and i couldn't not get it then nine stories by jd salinger this is the back yes this is the front as i mentioned in my how i read the internet most discussed books i 
love how Salinger writes. Regardless of whether I liked Holden or not, you know, it's complicated. I loved The Country in the Rye. I think the book itself is amazing and I want to read more by him. So I think these are nine short stories. I don't think they are interconnected. Are they? Please do let me know. Very excited. Then I have a book by Suketu Meta, The Secret Life of the Cities, La Vía Secreta de las Ciudades. I don't know what the original language of this book is, but it's about cities. It's a small essay considering, you know, what cities are, their function, their expansion. I am very much looking forward to this because I love exploring ideas of the city and urbanization and that in contrast with more rural areas and equality and class structures. I am a sucker for urban studies. So here it is. Then, oh, I actually had this book on my radar for a long time, never got it. And of course, because this is really the last time that we are going to go there because they are transferring next month and we are going to be under lockdown for the foreseeable future at least for two more weeks at the very least so they are no longer going to be there once we are out of lockdowns <sighs> yes that's why i had to get it it's called america alucinada by bettina gonzalez and it's basically about a cult and the children and the deer begin acting very weird it's supposed to be creepy and i am so digging it I also found another Carla Guefelbane book. I think this is not translated into English though. It's called Al Revés del Alma. No, El Revés del Alma, which is sort of like the flip side of the soul or the back of the soul. And it's about a photographer who lives in London and she returns to Chile after 21 years. And she has just broken up with an English scientist and a female lover from the aristocracy, so she's bisexual, I think, which is always cool to see in literature. Once here, she deals with her sister and her niece, Daniela, who suffers from bulimia. The final book that I bought at this bookstore was not discounted, but I've wanted to buy it for a long time, and it will pop up in another video eventually, because this book is Oscar Wilde and I by Lord Alfred Douglas, followed by The Profundis by Oscar Wilde. I am curious to read the translation of The Profundis because this is in Spanish. Um, that little bitch had the audacity to write a book on his relationship with Oscar Wilde. And of course I need to read it. Is it infuriating? Sure. But is it necessary to add it to my collection? Yes, of course. The answer is yes. In case you don't know, Oscar Wilde went to trial for libel with Lord Alfred Douglas's father because he called him a somdomite and yes, misspelled like that. He meant it as an insult, but technically it was true. And the only reason he pursued legal charges was basically because Douglas asked him to. <laughs> he had a lot of daddy issues, which fair enough was probably also why he was with Oscar. But yeah, I have never and hope to never be as invested in any other celebrity the same way that I am invested in Oscar Wilde, but what can I say? And finally, I have three books to share that we got at another secondhand store today. We went earlier on before we hit Manantial. The first is The Lower East Side Jews, an Immigrant Generation by Ronald Sanders. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's nonfiction, it has pictures, and it talks about the Jews in New York. And I am fascinated because growing up, it's not that I didn't know what Judaism was, but I didn't know it in a very cognizant way. I just was aware of it in the back of my mind, but I didn't understand any of it. It's not that we don't have Jews here. It's just that it's not the big cultural foundation that it is in the States and in particular in New York. But as I grew up, I started to realize that a lot of things that I loved about New York and about New York culture actually came from Jewish people in New York. And also I'm very happy that this is very literary focused. So like it talks about, for example, poetry and Jewish theater and philosophy, a lot of different things. So I'm very curious. I also found this book that of course is only in Spanish, but I'm very excited to have. It's called Los Cafés Literarios en Chile or Literary Cafés in Chile by Manuel Peña Muñoz. And it does exactly that. It's like an examination of literary cafes that were places where authors met all over Chile and it has illustrations and I'm going to read this in June because I, I, 
I, I'm so happy. I love it. It's it's so great. It's so great. And then a find that was a steal. Like I always say that in Chile, it's very hard to find secondhand books that are actually cheap in the same way that when you go to the States, for example, or basically anywhere else except Chile. I don't know, I haven't been to every country, but in my experience, you know, it's a thing, you know, secondhand market is a thing. Here, that is not the case. And so it's hard, not impossible, but hard. This book, hardcover, mint condition, they're cheap. And it's Country Girl by Edna O'Brien, a memoir. I already started reading this, loving it. I haven't read any Edna O'Brien yet. I want to, it's just that, you know, I haven't gotten around to it. But I got this because I had the opportunity and it's so good. I need to read more Edna O'Brien, clearly. <sighs> so that's all. I hope you enjoyed this video. It is a very emotional video, I guess. I don't know, it's, I feel things. I just feel things. I, I'm always happy to get your comments. So have you read any of these books? Would you like to read any of these books? Have you gotten any cool books recently? Any and all comments can go down below and you can follow me on social media. Everything is linked down below. See you next time. I don't even know what that noise is. I hope it, the phone doesn't catch it, but I think it might. I don't know if this will show on camera, so I might not include this clip but I have a pimple patch here. I feel it accurately. So if it shows, no, it's a pimple patch. By my god, my blah. Another, oh, any Edna Bryan read. Blah.